Hello, everybody. Sharing the screen. Hope you're seeing share screen. Ridiculous. Okay. And okay. I hope uh, you're seeing my first slide. A bad week for autocrats. Everybody seeing my slide? Okay. Yep. That's okay. Fair. Yes. Bad week for autocrats. Just uh, just just yesterday, uh, and and isn't that inspirational to see a whole nation come together, including their intelligence agencies and the army, against the populist right, if that's what you can call the uh, these religious extremists, um, and then um, Georgia. Uh, you know, they had a, a foreign agents law, a law that was going through, which was really a copy of Russia's NGO law. Russia uh, passed a law to uh, outlaw NGOs uh, that had any uh, foreign sponsorship. Um, and, and Georgia was going to copy that. But uh, people have, have protested in Georgia. You see an EU flag there. Um, and uh, I'm going to get rid of the subtitles. Um, and then uh, uh, the, um, uh, they went on to start protesting Georgia's inadequate support for Ukraine. You know, um, there are U Georgian units fighting in the Ukraine. They volunteered to go and fight around Bakhmut, uh, Georgians who had, uh, uh, are very mindful of uh, Russians in, invading. Uh, but uh, uh, interestingly, an oligarch uh, uh, got elected into office and has been dragging his feet on, on support for Georgia. Um, okay, I'm sorry, Ukraine. Um, and uh, so uh, massive protest. Uh, Russian influence legislation against uh, NGOs. Um, then there's this: um, the uh, ecumenical patriarch uh, of the Greek Orthodox Church. He's centered in uh, Constantinople. Obviously, it's Istanbul, but but because of historical precedent, uh, uh, the Turkish government tolerates him continuing to uh, 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 fill his traditional role as head of the Eastern uh, Orthodox uh, Church. Um, and David Klenick knows much more about all this uh, than, than I do. Um, and, and his most re recent action is to allow the uh, Orthodox in Lithuanian and Lithuania uh, to establish their own uh, new branch, Baltic branch of uh, uh, Greek uh, Orthodoxy, which is a real slap in the face of uh, Moscow. Um, so uh, you'll remember uh, Constantinople always called themselves the New Rome. Other people called them the Second Rome. Um, but when they fell to uh, the Turks, then Russia fancied itself as the the third Rome. Um, and so uh, the nevertheless, the the patriarch in Constantinople maintained that he he is the first among uh, equals, primus inter pares. Um, and there's 14 patriarchs, so I can get very confusing. So I'll confuse you a little bit more. Uh, this is uh, the uh, first among e equals, the center guy. Uh, but if you don't count, it may not turn out to be 14. But, uh, but there are ways to do this where you get 14. Uh, but it's not like it's not strictly hierarchical like uh, 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 Western Catholicism. That's that's for sure. 
Notice that Serbia has their, their own uh, uh, patriarch. Uh, so, so, so that's interesting. But you know who else now has their own uh, patriarch? Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine was awarded the, uh, their own uh, patriarchy um, uh, in uh, 2019. Um, and here's Michael, uh, Mike Pompeo uh, uh, getting in on the action, uh, which uh, outraged Moscow uh, uh, even more. But up until then, Ukraine uh, uh, Orthodox Christians had been very much under the thumb of uh, the, the patriarch of uh, Moscow. And we know from when we did the history of, of Ukraine and the current events in Ukraine, that uh, uh, the Orthodox Church in uh, uh, Moscow is, is like a state church. Uh, it, it, it is not at all uh, uh, neutral and spiritual. It's very much uh, uh, pro-Putin. And uh, uh, you can argue that uh, rather than uh, Putin corrupting the Orthodox Church, there's a storyline where you could say the Orthodox Church in Moscow corrupted Putin and told him how great he was. Um, the other thing that happened uh, uh, recently is uh, Serbia and uh, uh, Kosovo uh, are uh, getting closer. And that always uh, makes Moscow nervous because uh, that may hasten uh, Serbia's integration in, into the EU, particularly if they can bury the hatchet uh, with with uh, uh, Kosovo, um, so the the Balkans, uh, the activity of uh, 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 integration with the rest of Europe is is very active. We won't go into detail; that would be a whole lecture um, uh, in in itself. Uh, but uh, Serbia has been criticized for not formally uh, introducing sanctions against Moscow. Jill, remember. Going back through history, uh, they, they consider uh, Moscow kind of uh, as their guardian, and it was it was that nice relationship that, that contributed to giving us World War One. Um, and uh, uh, before uh, before that, um, uh, Moscow has has always um, uh, been uh, nosing around when they could in the Balkans. It was. Uh, uh, our bombing, Bill Clinton's bombing of Belgrade uh, uh, in the in the first uh, uh, conflict with with Kosovo, um, uh, he did not get UN agreement to that. So what did Clinton do? He went to NATO, <laughs> and NATO's been in the craw of uh, Putin. Uh, ever since that was uh, 1999, just as Putin was was taking over. Um, all right, now let, I want to talk a little bit about China because we uh, uh, we spent a couple of sessions talking about what is what does China want? Remember that whole whole series? And Ramsey did uh, a couple of sessions on on that, looking at at the history. Um, and we saw the No Limits Partnership uh, reach a peak uh, in the last uh, week. Um, and what happened? Uh, it, it, it wasn't huge by any means. Um, <laughs> it's been labeled as transa transactional <laughs> diplomacy. God bless you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, uh -huh. a transactional uh, uh, uh diplomacy but it contains real perils you can see um it, the fact that putin was indicted as a war criminal um <laughs> days before she arrived uh, i don't know who who set up that timing um but uh, there was no great breakthrough which is captured in in this cartoon there's a hug but she's looking at his watch <laughs> right trying to get out of town this is on the um, financial times um 
and um, transactional uh, uh, gets at what does China want, which was the, the cover of a previous Economist uh, edition. And uh, uh, last week's edition really answers it. Um, it's to ensure that Russia is subordinate. So this is not an equal a partnership. Xi's goal is to make it clear that Russia is subordinate and the econ economics of the situation dictate that it, that it will be so. Now, Russia has some expertise in, in weapons that there's in some areas they are ahead, but in terms of economic power, they're, so, they're subordinate. Um, and then she is trying to dress himself up as a, a peacemaker. So he wanted to turn this trip in, into uh, not a trip uh, with no limits, but he wanted to be the peacemaker. And he, he got a head start uh, the week before with Saudi Arabia and uh, Iran. And apparently uh, their reapproachment was already in, in track and, and China came in at the, uh, at the last moment. So the, the, it's not like they, they jump-started it from zero. Um, and so to uh, sell himself as a peacemaker, he cynically, um, uh, uh, propose, is proposing a plan that would reward Russia uh, aggression and give Russia one sixth of of the Ukraine. And surely he must know uh, that that's not uh, a, a viable peace plan. So uh, uh, what do, what do they want? I, I I love this graphic. They want to be the center. They want everything to revolve. Um, uh, around them. And they want to do that to get themselves at the center in the United States out of its primary position that it's held since World War II. Uh, they have to undermine uh, Western sanctions and, and uh, uh, their uh, military strength. Um, and obviously, they're doing this with their eye on, on Taiwan. Um, so, uh, they, they are hitting, uh, this point about Iraq awfully hard. I've been hitting it. I've, I've been talking about one thing I agree with Putin on was how terrible our 2003, uh, invasion, uh, uh in, in Iraq was, uh, was, uh, this week, um, uh, I was, uh, reminiscing with, a. Uh, an old friend and we were in uh, email communication and I, I pulled out an old, old email from 2002 when I went to uh, a demonstration in the Civic Center against what uh, W. Bush at the time uh, was, call, was calling a preemptive uh, action. And, oh, was... I, I, and I was, I was <laughs> really upset about that. My mom. Uh, I was the I was uh, uh, described and people like me um, by the San Francisco Chronicle as being old grizzled hippies were there protesting uh, grizzled. So I, I, I accept that, uh, especially uh, uh, 20 years later. I'm even more grizzled. So they dress they dress up their policies with fancy names, like they're promoting a, a global uh, civilization. Well, what does that really mean? It just means that um, uh, we're all equal and the people who've been in charge should uh, refrain from imposing their own universal values, universal values. So what, are, what, what do they mean? It's just basically, the Bretton Woods uh, uh, settlement, uh, the rule of law, the international uh, organizations, uh, the United Nations is the perfect example of universal um, uh, values, uh, uh, the, the human rights uh, uh, declaration from the United Nations, universal. But China is saying, no, uh, 
uh, they're not really keen on uh, uh, universal rights. What they are keen on is stability, stability uh, uh, with, within uh, uh, their own uh, nation and to keep uh, 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 protest at arm's length, at arm's length. Um, and, and uh, no confrontation. So what are what do they talk about? So multilateralism, that's the new word that pushes universal values off stage. And then they talk about uh, the global security uh, initiative. Well, what does that mean? It means removing the uh, America's military uh, uh, power. Um, uh, and um, I think I, okay, I hope I'm back. Um, and uh, the Global Development uh, Initiative, fancy words uh, that uh, diplomacy should be done without uh, imposing uh, conditions. And they, they want what they're calling real democracy, which is economic power, basically, without political uh, uh, liberties. And they use that in, in, in their interacting with the elites of other countries, particularly Africa. We're, hey, we'll come in, we'll give you economic development, and we won't make a fuss about democracy like the United States does. Um, and <laughs> so uh, uh, they finally, their concept of a global civilization is basically one with, uh, without uh, uh, uni universal human rights. And they, they see a, a Western promotion of, human, of universal human rights as a new kind of colonialism. So they use that argument with, say, African leaders. And it has more uh, uh, support outside the West than you may think. Lula. Uh, who's a good guy in 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 Brazil? Uh, he he's been influenced again by what we did in Iraq in 2003, and along with other people, uh, see the West as as being two faced and having double standards. So it just keeps coming up all the time. Iraq in 2003, uh, and I, I'm sure I won't be able to resist from mentioning it uh, more. A hundred, uh, the Economist counts up, there are a hundred uh, uh, countries that are not fully enforcing sanctions against uh, uh, Russia. Uh, the final thing, of course, is why uh, sign on with America if they're going to turn around and elect another leader like Donald Trump? So <laughs> it's, it, it, it's not just uh, w. Bush in Iraq. It's also our own uh, populist uh, uh, movement that have really taken us off the center of the stage uh, in as as world leaders. Um, so, and I think they, these are arguments that Ramsey uh, would make. Um, he he is uh, um, appreciates uh, with his uh, uh, sense of history. Uh, the, the Confucian tradition and Chinese uh, uh, influence in the world, um, uh, uh, ideologically, uh, 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 socially, the way their their society operates, uh, um, the well-defined uh, uh, roles within the family, um, and he's uh, he, I, I, I'm I, I'm taking. Uh, 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 undue uh, uh, privilege here and in, in talking about him. So I'll just say the economist uh, says um, that uh, China has uh, a, a chance to do uh, real good. Uh, they can could bring Iran and Saudi Arabia together because they're their biggest export markets. Uh, so trade. And climate change, China, with their, their uh, mercantilist economy, 
can take a, a pretty good action. They're, they're, they're leading in a renewable uh, uh, energy. Um, and I, uh, last week, I, I told you about uh, the interview with Ezra Klein, with the woman who talked about the subtlety of responsive governance uh, in, in China. When, when there is a protest, um, the, the, uh, the Chinese government uh, does respond. So that's, that's a different kind of um, uh, uh, consent, if you will. Um, Ramsey's point is our uh, attitude now should not be zero sum, uh, and it is. That's exactly what it is now. It's zero sum from Trump to Biden to, to Congress to the, the bipartisanship we see is we win, uh, uh, they lose. Um, and this is a quote from uh, Ramsey. We've, uh, some of us have been having a nice little uh, side chat uh, uh, in uh, email, basically around artificial intelligence. And we can spend some time on that if there's interest. Um, uh, but Ramsey says uh, it may be smart to to keep China down, but is it is it wise? So it's a Ramsey again uh, uh, taking a, a larger uh, perspective. Um, but the downside uh, of all this, um, uh, it, how stable is the, the the Chinese Communist Party uh, really? They really stubbed their toe with zero uh, COVID. We saw in their previous history when they handed power to one man, they got the cultural revolution that turned off the universities uh, uh, for 10 years. Um, the, uh, uh, there's always a, a, a danger in uh, expediency that they're showing now because contradictions will, will uh, develop. We've seen um, uh, their problem with the Uyghurs uh, cause problems with the Taliban. The uh, Chinese buildings are being blown up in, in Kabul. Um, obviously ignoring uh, Iran's nuclear development uh, uh, could not turn out well for the Silk Road countries, that's for sure. Um, and uh, turning their back on the war crimes that have uh, been committed in the in the Ukraine shows the uh, the downside of da downplaying uh, uh, human human rights. The other thing about China is it, it's relatively a closed country. One of our advantages is that we're wide open and we attract talent from all around the world, uh, but not so much with them. Um, and uh, the students from Africa have a tough time. Uh, in China, you talk about uh, racism in America, but they ninety percent of the, the the country is Han, and uh, they try to uh, uh, do well by by their uh, minority communities. But if you've traveled in China as we have, you see they are not that successful. Uh, so, and the, the same is true of Japan, by the way, and they're really paying the price now as their population um, uh, plummets. Um, and then there's always uh, the, the direct threat uh, that China presents, not just to Taiwan, but also in the uh, South China Sea. Uh, India and China have border clashes. Uh, uh, China and Vietnam fought a war uh, back in uh, 1979, even uh, tension with South Korea and Japan, uh, well known. Um, so uh, the other thing is the basic policy behind them, if it's not human rights and it's not ideology, it's basically might makes right. That's what the uh, uh, autocrats ideology is. And that may not, uh, uh, not sit well uh, with ordinary people for, for a really uh, long time. Um, and what is their long time goal? And our in the post-World War II reckon, even post-World War I, Wilson's 14 points, 
there, there was an, an ideology. There were institutions, uh, the United Nations, uh, the, the Human Rights uh, Charter. What, what's China coming up with? Uh, the, uh, there's nothing affection. Uh, 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 there's nothing in Chinese ideology that's going to inspire me. I don't know about it, and I don't know about anybody. Um, uh, I'd, I'd love to hear, hear what Ramsey uh, has to say. Um, at some point, you may, you may be, uh, uh, and they have, uh, there have been uh, 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 spells of time, even uh, recently, where Con uh, Confucius uh, was honored. And obviously, there's a lot, a lot there. Um, uh, 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 she claims that he is a Buddhist. <laughs> Um, but we haven't seen much much uh, evidence of that. But would would there be a, a form of Buddhism uh, that he would eventually turn to as he uh, uh, get gets older? Um, and so it it seems like it's a, a ideal free uh, global vision. And how uh, sustainable sustainable is that? What's to inspire us? Um, uh, so uh, it's a, a poverty of, of worldview uh, kind of sums up what I'm, I'm saying. Uh, America in 1945 bound itself to lasting alliances and common rules. And China ain't doing that. Uh, and the, the final point, uh, it's right there in The Economist, uh, uh, it's been tarnished. Uh, including Iraq. All right, so um, uh, I'm going to pause a second um, and see if anybody has any any comments on the, the current events. I know I, 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 I spent the majority of time on China, but I think it's an important moment, and uh, uh, so did the uh, economists. All right, so, yeah. I've forgotten uh, uh, Xi Jinping's background. Did he have a mercantilist background? No, no, his father uh, uh, was a politician. He's called a princeling yeah. because his, his father was such a, a prominent revolutionary. So he has no, is it she? Yeah. Background in business. No, I think, uh, I think uh, if I'm not mistaken, maybe when he was very young, he toured the United States and may even have been on a, a hog farm in Iowa uh, and expressed admiration. Um, on his way up, uh, uh, when he was given uh, political power in various uh, smaller areas, um, uh, he worked with uh, uh, the business people, especially the new entrepreneurs that emerged after uh, Deng Xiaoping. So he knows how to work with them. Um, he obviously, a couple of years ago, turned his back on them and, and started talking about common prosperity and leveling uh, uh, out, uh, 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 leveling out leveling out the um, uh, uh, income distribution. But uh, he <laughs> that did not go well, and it really spooked uh, entrepreneurship. So he has um, uh, uh, op opened up uh, the, the, the opportunity for investment again and, and tried to make nice uh, with the business class. But um, you'll remember uh, last week we talked about his second in command yeah. who, who joined him. Um, and, and that guy is super pragmatic, Lee. He's super uh, pragmatic and he is, is from very humble uh, background, um, a farm family. And uh, he went to agriculture school. He's not. Uh, uh, he, he's, as I said last week, he's more like Harry Truman. And the fact that he is Xi's best buddy and maybe 
his successor uh, is an indirect way of answering your question. So that uh, if he has influence, and that's why I uh, I presented uh, 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 the article and sent it around. If you haven't seen the the article on on the new president in China, um, uh, dig it out. It's interesting. Okay, anything else on uh, current events before we get back to California? Okay, uh, so. Um, I just wanted to say a couple of things uh, about uh, water that we touched on um, uh, last week. We were talking about the, the uh, medieval anomaly, uh, the uh, 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 500 years of drought um, th that affected the American uh, natives and, and weakened uh, their, their uh, economies and lifestyle the deer population in particular, um, and uh, made it easier for the Spanish uh, to, to come in. And last week we talked about uh, Salton Sea in the Imperial Valley, and Jim Teisel, uh, uh talked about uh, Tulare Lake in the, in the Central Valley. And so we, we've been, uh, uh, just getting a few more details on that. So the Salton Sea was originally called Lake uh, Kaolia, and but it it dried up, had been dry for 320 years. So when it was filled by that accident at 1905, uh, at the that uh, the cut part that humans had made to divide to gently divert some water to the Imperial Valley. And, and in a very wet year, the Colorado River decided, you know, that, that, that's cool. We'll go back there because they had flown. Uh, the Colorado had uh, flown many different directions. So when you look at the history of the Mississippi or the Yalu River, uh, any of these rivers, they, they're constantly changing uh, their routes. So, uh, the, so for two years, uh, uh, the Kalo River flowed in, into the Salton uh, Sea. Um, and, uh, but uh, it, it became a, a dry desert basin um, uh, uh, 320 uh, years ago. Uh, the, the clues uh, to uh, the nature of the Colorado River found in the dating the native American villages uh, around the, the Salton Sea. Um, but uh, for the last 380 years until uh, 1905, it, it was uh, uh, salty. Um, and uh, so that, that, that was just a little more detail on dating uh, the, the Salton Sea. And uh, now let's let's look at the Central Valley and and uh, the Tulare Lake. Uh, thanks to Jim Teisel uh, for sending uh, this map showing the uh, the Tulare Lake and the the extent uh, of it. Um, Yokut uh, people uh, lived and fished around here, as you can imagine, um, and. Uh, in fact, this was the largest freshwater lake west of the Mississippi um, uh, in, in the 17th uh, century. Um, and uh, when you look at the whole United States, it was the third largest freshwater lake. So uh, uh, not, uh, not shabby. Um, now, uh, Spanish came, but it wasn't the Spanish. It was the American uh, farmers uh, that that came uh, that diverted it as they're diverting it now. Yes, Bob. Can anyone comment on what the impact of the snow melt this year might be on the on how large the Tulare Lake may become by the end of the summer? It, it ought to be enormous. Oh. Uh, yeah, but there are some plans uh, to uh, siphon it off to refill the aquifer. 
Um, so let me, maybe that's, that'll answer uh, a little bit. Um, so let, let, I'll go on to the next slide. Um, he, uh, Jim Teisel sent uh, this as well. Thank you, Jim. Um, uh, and th that uh, 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 it was uh, um, a more detail uh, and that part of th that extra water is going to replenish California ground, uh, groundwater. So uh, uh, God bless uh, uh, Google. Uh, National Geographic uh, had an, uh, an article about, about that uh, from, from a year ago, which I'll go to after Aiko asks her question. Um, my uh, friend told me about this article in the San Francisco Chronicle this past weekend. It's titled, A Lost Lake is Reemerging in California and Farms and Communities are Going Underwater. It's about to Larry Lake. So go to Google and put Chronicle, A Lost Lake is Reemerging. See if you can find that article. Well, I'll send, I'll send it out when I send out the... Um... Uh, when I send out the, the link to the videotape, I'll, I'll send out that article, okay? Okay, I'll send it to you. Yeah. Send John, it. hey, David, just a note here. You know, people don't realize, but the, the level of the lake is not the issue. It's the underground aquifer. And there are estimates that this whole Central Valley has dropped 20 feet because of the pumping. So the deficit is not just a surface water. It's a much deeper issue. Even if a lake fills up and overflows because all the dams can't hold it, it's still we're still going to be way behind. Maybe you're going to get to that. All right. Yeah. And so oh, here's, yeah. The here's, the here's the National Geographic. Here's the National Geographic. I'm getting feedback. I'm getting feedback. <laughs> <laughs> so if uh, whoever j recently just flipped a, an audio switch. Uh, Switch it back. <laughs> uh, this is from the uh, National Geographic article, and they, uh, uh, I guess, were using LIDAR, maybe, uh, I don't know, um, to see where the best place would be uh, to uh, take the uh, uh, funnel, the, uh, the extra water, and to uh, get it back into uh, the aquifer. And um apparently they they found a place uh where if you put all the water here it'll uh have an easy path through the clay layer and down back into the aquifer so i don't know exactly how they're going to do it this article's from a, a year ago but maybe uh ico's uh, uh new article will uh, tell us in the uh, I'll send it out, and we can we can talk about about this next week. But yeah, the, uh, the this all this extra water should not evaporate, right? Shouldn't be sitting there, and it shouldn't just go out to the ocean. Although there are environmentalists that say the uh, delta in the bay needs a good flushing. Um, but the, uh, if uh, if what's if it's true that the, uh, this is a bountiful year uh, water for everybody, certainly a lot of it should get back into uh, uh, the aquifer. I think uh, um, uh, we've talked in the past uh, uh, about this uh, great book I called the uh, Dreamt Land, Dreamt Land um, about uh, pumping. Uh, uh, against all advice, um, the uh, the aquifer in, in the southern uh, central uh, valley. And in fact, it was turned into a, a, a season of entertainment on this uh, uh, lawyer show, Goliath, uh, 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 starring Billy Bob Thornton, season two, um, if you're if you're interested. Uh, it, there's a lot of facts and, and they uh, recreate the actual uh, entrepreneur uh, and his wife. Um, she is in charge of pomegranates. And the, if you've ever bought Palm Wonderful pomegranate juice, uh, uh, you're drinking water from the uh, aquifer. 
<laughs> and they are they've been irresponsibly uh, pumping water in the southern part of the central uh, uh, valley. But if you want uh, just the facts, uh, Dreamt Land is 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 the book. Mark Arax. Mark Arax. Um, uh, and uh, the, I mean, in, in the dramatization with uh, Billy Bob Thornton, one of his uh, best friends uh, falls into a sinkhole and dies. <laughs> the very first episode, the sinkhole being what's uh, resulted from the, the uh, uh, pumped aquaphor. All right, so now uh, that's it for water. Uh, I want to go to a face-off. What's the face-off? So it's the the mindsets, um, but how radically they differ, different they were between Spanish and Native uh, Americans. That's going to be no surprise given what, what we know, but I just want to be explicit about it as as Farragher, the Farragher book is. So if you want to read, read uh, in detail, he points out, look, Spain was hierarchical, feudal. They were privileged lords to the extent they, they gladly enslaved uh, uh, Africans. Um, and they were protected by a um, spiritual ideology that said the uh, colonizers were blessed by the Pope and uh, were given permission following the injunctions of the, the, the Bible uh, to uh, convert and, uh, uh, and if not convert, subjugate pagans. So that was, that was their mindset. How different was that with the Native Americans? As we've seen, they lived in their own little we can call them countries, but basically they're, they're, they're villages, like uh, uh, Bruce is tending to um, in the Lafayette Community Garden, the Miwok Village, without any authority, without any hierarchy. Sure, there are alpha ma uh, males, no doubt, uh, but it wasn't always alpha males. There were s some uh, 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 tribes where it was alpha females. Um, and in Southern California, we, we, we heard about that. And uh, they believed not just in one God, but they believed in a multitude of spirits. We sent, spent some time talking about coyote and, and the mythology around uh, coyote. Um, and the way they were living, you could argue, um, found uh, 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 representation in various ideals in Western thought. Rousseau uh, uh, talked about uh, the, no the noble uh, savage. Um, uh, there is an anarchist uh, ideal, and uh, we see anarch anarchism. Oh, Eichel, I need the battery. Um, oh, I, I need the other one, I'm sorry. Um, the the uh, we we've seen anarchism um, uh, emerge in Antifa. An the Antifa movement has been taken over by by anarchists, uh, and so uh, uh, that's a that's a problem. Um, the uh, the Marxist ideal that we're going to reach a level and the states, we're going to have so much and so it's going to be so plentiful, the state will wither away. Now, maybe that's what artificial intelligence will be uh, uh, bringing us. Oh, Iko, I've got it. Iko, it's in my pocket. <laughs> Duh. Um, our, ba our, our battery's running out and I have the charger. Here you go. Thank you. Technical interlude here. Uh, we're charged. Um, and, and so 
uh, here we're looking at the maldistribution of wealth and, and uh, we, we sure have spent a lot of time on that over the last 15 years with Ramsey. Um, so uh, the impact of, of the all-powerful uh, uh, Christian God um, if you were baptized, you're going to have life uh, everlasting. Uh, but it's your duty to spread that message. Uh, and the, you got a golden rule. Every society has a golden rule. But Christianity's golden rule comes with a catch. No tolerance. So we get things like the Inquisition. Um, and... Uh, uh, the Pope gave full permission uh, to, to invade. Uh, we're going to see, uh, and we actually Ramsey talked about the, uh, the debates within uh, the, the, uh, the uh, Spanish uh, Catholic Church but between uh, Sepulva, uh, Sepulveda um, and, uh, uh, what's the name of the other guy? Um, I'm forgetting, but the, uh, de, de las Casas, uh, those debates that, hey, wait a minute, we got to be nicer. No, we've got to convert them. But in any case, if you're a freelance uh, uh, alpha male out wandering around the countryside, you have uh, been given uh, a, a moral permission uh, to, to uh, convert those those uh, uh, Native Americans, so uh, uh, that's the face-off, and that's the tragedy. So now we we look at uh, 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 the result of that that face-off. We're actually ready to start looking at Spanish interaction with with the New World. From and I pick 1519. That's after uh, Cortez has subdued the the Aztecs, um, and they start looking around uh, uh, further than Mexico. Right? They go. Uh, they get to Manila. Magellan's already been around, uh, and uh, Manila is a entrepreneurial hub. It's been a trading hub for a long time. Uh, that's where the Japanese and the Chinese uh, uh, went to trade. So as soon as the Portuguese came by, they said, yeah, okay, uh, 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 we're in. Um, and, and Spain started sending galleons full of silver uh, that they were uh, mining in Potosi as uh, Ramsey uh, uh, so clearly uh, uh, described with slides of his uh, trip down into the Potosi mines. Uh, he was, it was pretty scary. Uh, but they took that silver over and said, yeah, we want some of that, uh, some of that silk and some of that tea. Um, and uh, the uh, uh, Portuguese came, came along as well. Um, I say the Japanese, if you haven't read Shogun, uh, it captures perfectly the tension between the, the Spanish, the Portuguese, and the Japanese who are, are, are resisting this uh, Christian uh, uh, urge to uh, 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 proselytize and convert. Um, so uh, the Spain, though, when it loaded up uh, the the silks and it, it loaded up the tea, uh, the, the quickest way would would be for them to go home, uh, back home, heading west. But they couldn't. And and why is that? Why are they confined? Uh, so Spain is is white. Portuguese is blue. Was it the line that the Pope drew? Yes, good, Iko. The line that the, the, the Pope drew, which came down and just caught the nose of uh, Brazil. I'll show you the full map in, in just a second. So uh, uh, they're over here. They got all this great stuff. 
in, in uh, uh, Manila they, from China, but they can't go home because the blue routes are reserved uh, for, for the, the Portuguese. So what do they have to do? They have to come back to Alcapulco, transfer to uh, horses, burrows, uh, uh, take, it, take it across, or maybe they might go down to Panama um, and uh, uh, back to uh, towards Havana uh, for uh, uh, to resupply, and, and then uh, back back to Spain, stopping to resupply at the at the the Azores. So that's that's what they had to do, and you're going to see that this return home is what's going to tie in California. It, it's going to be, they're going to find some interesting things in California, but nothing near as interesting as uh, the, the spices and silks and tea. Uh, and what? Oh, okay. Uh, well, we'll see deer skins are about the only thing that, that'll contribute to the Manila trade. Um, but uh, okay. So I, I want to at least uh, get, here's the, the line that Ico is, is talking about. Um, so uh, here uh, you see the, the line that comes down and nips uh, the nose of uh, uh, Brazil. And uh, all this is the, the Portuguese um, the hemisphere. Uh, and they, they kind of uh, uh, cut the Philippines in two. This is interesting. So there was a lot of tension here. And thus, the novel Shogun uh, picks up on that. Well, wait a minute. I'm allowed to be here because I'm, I'm here. And I'm allowed to be here, uh, says Spain, because I'm here. Uh, uh, so, uh, and that, that tension is captured very well in that, in that uh, novel. Um, okay. All right. Uh, th this will be my last question. So why couldn't Spain have just loaded things on land and, and gone back on the Silk Road? Because Istanbul had been taken over by, by Ottomans. Uh, that, that, and, that, so, and that was in 1453. When they hadn't been there that long, but they'd certainly been there long enough to disrupt uh, the, the Silk Road. Um, so the only way they were gonna get their uh, Asian goods to Spain uh, uh, was uh, to, to come back. And you can see they're, they're kind of going in, in a circle. Uh, and why are they going in a circle in the Pacific Ocean? They're going to get go in a circle. They're going to eventually get back to Alcapulco, but they're going to go in a circle because that's the way the water runs. And I don't know. Uh, I, the, there are probably some scientists out there that can explain it better than I can. But these uh, uh, prevailing currents, John, it's the trade winds more than the currents. Okay. Um, uh, maybe they, they interact, the trade winds and the currents. Um, and so it's, it's clockwise in the north and counterclockwise um, in, in the south. Um, and uh, so what, as soon as Spain can figure out, well, we're here in Manila, I, we want to, we went, really want to head east, but we're, we're going to first have to head north, which brings them into contact um, with, with Japan. And so uh, they, they come over the north, catch the north uh, uh, Pacific current from this uh, current in Japan. And it's that exposure in Japan, the Portuguese um, uh, get concessions uh, uh, to uh, set up a trading post on an artificial island off of uh, 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 Kyushu. Um, 
and uh, th then from there they catch the North Pacific Current, currently home to the Great Pacific uh, Garbage Patch, if you don't know it. So, okay, uh, so next week uh, we'll start off uh, with the other motives and, ah, uh, Bob, I'll finally get to your maps when we talk about uh, Queen, Queen Khalifa and the fabled uh, Northwest uh, uh, Passage. The other two uh, reasons for Spain to, to come into California. Okay, questions? Comments? Okay. One, uh, yeah, Homer's right about the currents, it's the winds, but it has to do with the earth spinning. If you think about the earth spinning in a certain direction, then that affects the way things on the planet are going to be, you know, are going to move. Yeah, both wind and, and wind water. And water. Both wind and water, correct. It has to do with the Kuriyoan effect of the spinning and the, the friction on the lack of the space and, and the earth. And, yeah. Just have to see which to see which, which direction the direction the just see what direction the, the, the toilet bowl flows under in the, in the, in the, uh, in the south end southern end right 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 okay okay I don't know where we're getting the uh, thing with uh, is that what he's talking about. In southern, uh, the southern hemisphere, it's different from the northern hemisphere. That determines the wind, or I don't know if magnetism comes into it. Yeah, yeah, I'll have to rely on the science people. Okay, all right, okay, see y'all. Thank you, thank you, John. That was great. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, Linda. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Good. How are you? Good to see uh -huh. you. Good to see you. <laughs>